What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel with Scoring Tips and this is how to approach a scoring gig. Now part one, we talked about getting the right deliverables. That's the right video, the right size of the video, the burnt in window time code, the dialogue married to the video, a separate audio mix for your temp score, and separate mixes of any songs that were licensed for that. In part two, we're gonna talk about the temp score, which can be our nemesis as composers. Let's check this out. All right, I'm gonna call this temp score madness because it can be maddening to a composer when your producer or whoever's created this has put a temp score in and they've kind of fallen in love with it. And I call that demo fever. It's like, yeah, we used a little bit from Sicario and then we and then we used, um, this part was from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and then we used a little bit from Dune over here and this part was really cool so we used like a Ramon's tune and you're like, none of this is connected whatsoever. But they're like, well, we really like it. so. If you can do something along the lines of that, it's just like kiss of death. So your job as a composer is to unravel the demo fever and you have to be confident. Honestly, you're the composer and you have your own vision of this. Maybe I'm giving credit to composers a little bit too much because I have pride in my craft, whatever. But the thing is you were hired for the reason. Remember rule number one, always go back to rule number one. You're the composer. You are the wheelhouse here. That is your strength. And that's why you were hired for this job. Stick to your guns on that. At the same time, you are working for somebody and you have to heed to their notes to a certain extent, but you can defend your position on why you're approaching this. Now, temp score is hard to break out of the minds of the producers who've gotten used to that temp score. What I like to do is pre-convince them that you've got a vision for this. And obviously, if you did a demo for this, they've heard your vision and presumably they like that vision. And therefore, you need to have them trust your vision and why it is that you're chosen to do this job and that you're going to see the big picture. The other thing with temp scores is that sometimes they're just going like, yeah, this particular cue really works for this scene. And then this particular cue really works for that scene, but they're not connected whatsoever. So then you're not really building, what you're building is like an album of like greatest hits of things that are not connected whatsoever. Therefore, it's not cohesive. Your job is to make the score cohesive, to give it a sound. One of the things I usually say to get a gig is, hey, I want people who are in the next room, when they hear the score, they go, wait, is that the score for the so-and-so movie? They'll just know what it is by the score. Why? Because it's unique. So you're bringing your uniqueness to the table. Use that line, it works, but then deliver that uniqueness. I just finished up a film, and I can't really tell you what the film is, but in that film, it involves a dog and a soldier. There's a scene early on in the movie where the soldier and the dog leave the hospital. And really what was described to me was, yeah, he's getting kicked out of the hospital, and it's kind of a bad scene. So I wrote it like that. And that's what's visually being presented there. But the temp track was from Marley and Me. And it was this hokey, like cutesy thing. And it didn't match at all. To be honest with you, I didn't listen to the temp score at all because I didn't want their vision to get into my head. I wanted my vision to be on this thing, especially because I knew the temp score was a hodgepodge of different cues from different movies that had no cohesiveness. Out of all the cues I did in that movie, that was the only one the producer pushed back on and said, you know, I really like the sweetness of of that cue, but then proceeded to go into, you know, the backstory is this guy and the dog, well, they were in training camp together and he saw them on the streets and there was this whole backstory that did not exist in the film whatsoever. In fact, the dog was only in like three minutes of the film and it was very like passive. And so how are you as a viewer supposed to know that? This producer's like, no, they had this relationship. I'm like, the relationship was in your head and nobody else knows this. I'm watching this movie the first time. I can't discern any of that and nor does the visual ever play out in the rest of the film. So how am I supposed to like make a hokey cue when it's not visually being represented? Again, what you're taking in is what everybody else is taking in. And so if you see that it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Another story about the backstory of what's supposed to be happening is I do a lot of animation. And one particular series I was doing for Nickelodeon, the animation didn't really match the emotions of what was supposed to be happening in the script. Now, the producers of that show were like, yeah, the dog is supposed to be happy in this another dog thing. I guess I have a nemesis with dogs. I'm like, but the dog is not smiling. Yeah, but he's supposed to be happy, but nobody with eyes would actually realize the dog is smiling. So yeah, but it needs to be happy. So I'm like, okay, so maybe you need to tell me that ahead of time that like, hey, the animation didn't really work out this way. And by the way, the dog that's frowning right now, he's supposed to be happy. Oh, okay. I'll play it happy then. See what I'm saying? It can get really dodgy what's in the producer's heads and what's actually being represented in the actual video or film or episodic thing that you're looking at that you're scoring to. So follow your instincts.
they're probably right. Another little tip or trick, if they're really hinting like, I really like this score and I really like the pulse that's in this one score of this movie, or like this one scene, it's like a hippy dippy thing and they're tripping out and I really like this, you know, old record. Pay attention to those things and then feed them back your version of that. In other words, if the temp score had this pulse that the producer really liked, build your own pulse, but not based on the temp score, on what is in your gut and make that pulse your own. So if they were like harping on this pulse that they really liked in this one scene, like you gotta do this pulse because that's what I really want. Give him your own version of something that's a perceived pulse that you like that actually is cohesive with the rest of your score. And when you're showing them that, be like, you know that pulse that you wanted? This is my pulse. And I'm like, oh yeah. That means you listened to them and you took in their things without actually being swayed by the other score. A little insider secret, I feed things back to them that they've given me as input, but with my own twist and my own special way. Therefore, it's inherently mine, my approach, but it's in consideration of the things that they've responded to. Generally, that works really well. But don't be afraid if something is completely wrong on the temp score and they harp on you on that to defend your position on why this really doesn't work and explain why. Remember, they're so deep into this temp score and this cut and this movie for so long that they have all these threads that are not actually necessarily represented by the film. In the case of that one dog cue that I originally talked about that was kind of hokey that I didn't play hokey, I said, you know what, why don't I finish the whole story score and if you still feel that way when we get back to that cue once you see the entire body of work cohesively together then I'll address it. They agreed to that and guess what at the end of the film they loved the cue that I chose to do because then they saw the whole picture and like yes it was exactly right you were right. So to recap temp scores can be an albatross but you can use bits and pieces of the information that they feed you and feed it back to them in your own special way that acknowledges what they like about the temp score but actually supports what you want to do to make this score. Which brings me to the next part of this, and that's spotting the picture. In part three, we'll talk about what you're going to do to spot the picture. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified for future videos. And give me your comments. What kind of temp score nightmares have you dealt with? I'll see you on part three of how to approach a scoring gig. Until then, this is George Gabriel Music. Bye.